As Christians, we understand that prayer is an important part of the spiritual life, but what exactly is prayer? The Holy Fathers say that prayer is the movement of the heart towards God. It's the union of man with God, the communication between the creature and the Creator. In essence, it's the most awesome privilege that God has given us. St. Theophon the Recluse calls prayer the breath of our soul. The presence of prayer in our life means that we are spiritually alive. Therefore, a person without prayer is spiritually dead. However, it's possible for a person who is a regular attendant of church services, someone who possibly even says morning or evening prayers at home, to be without true prayer. Standing in front of icons, making the sign of the cross, making prostrations, while these are all very good, these are not prayers in themselves. These outward physical actions call the whole person to prayer so that we can offer God our true prayer which comes from our hearts. The most important thing during prayer is an invocation of a feeling of reverence to God, devotedness to Him, gratitude for His blessings, submission to His holy will, aspiring to glorify Him in all things. That's why while praying we should make those feelings permeate ourselves so that our heart won't be dry. It's only when our hearts appeal to God that our reading of prayers become true prayers. So, how do we acquire the proper attitude of prayer? A good way to cultivate true prayer within ourselves is reading prayers from prayer books. Now, some may ask, why do I need to read a prayer? I know how to pray. I can speak to God. What benefit is it to me to read someone else's prayers? Now, the answer to this is that the prayers that are contained in these prayer books are not just any old prayers. These come from the life and the tradition of the Church, and many have been written by saints themselves and have been recorded and handed down to us in order to give us a firm foundation on our quest to acquiring true prayer so that we may learn how to pray as they prayed. Now the purpose of reading these prayers is not just to memorize them, but to eventually make these prayers come from our hearts, not just our lips. St. Theophon the Recluse says there are three ways to do this. First, don't start a prayer without preparing yourself to pray. Before you pray, no matter where this prayer is going to take place, stand or sit for a short time and try to clear your mind of all irrelevant thoughts and worldly cares. Second, Say the prayers with feeling and attention, not casually. It's good never to rush through prayers or to say it just out of habit, but to make sure you understand what you are saying. And third, after completing your prayer, don't rush back to worldly cares. Don't rush back to turn the TV on or the radio or to work. Allow time for the prayers to linger in your soul and to understand what has taken place. After our heart and mind become accustomed to turning towards God in prayer through the use of these prayers in the prayer books, then after a while we can try to do it on our own. The goal of these prayers in the prayer book is to make our soul capable of entering into a conversation with the Lord. This is what we must teach ourselves to do. We must learn how to pray. And not just so that we can learn these prayers, but that we can pray them, really pray them, from our own hearts. As with any spiritual endeavor, prayer takes practice. We need to practice prayer because there is no value in the prayer in which the tongue prays but the heart is silent. Our prayers will grow gradually more and more perfect 
as we improve the manner of our life and cleanse our heart from its sinful passions. The banishment of sinful ways from our lives brings as its reward our success in prayer. We must emphasize that the Christian does not achieve true prayer immediately, but only gradually, through many, many struggles and trials. All of the virtues require great toil and patience and effort, but nowhere more than in the striving after the supreme virtue and privilege of prayer.